What is going on, my peeps? Uh, Tuesdays. I guess I'm doing these on Tuesdays and I'm uploading them uh, Wednesday or Thursday. Probably Thursday. Uh, but anyways, it's like 50. It was 50 for a high. But now it's probably 40. So, heater's back on. Heater's a lifesaver. Anyways, check this out. You got a horn button. NRG uh, horn button for my steering wheel. Hope it fits. It looks like it's gonna fit. Hold on, give me a second. Oh, that sucks. It's not gonna fit. Uh, we got a works bell interface and NRG uh, plugs and uh, ain't gonna work. So we're gonna have to cut and splice. Uh, I don't think I have that size. Right here. Hey, I'll figure something else. We'll make it work. Alright guys. Uh, steering wheel button is in. I mean the horn button is in the steering wheel. And um, let me just kind of explain a little bit on why I chose the steering wheel. Because uh, there's a lot of good steering wheels out there. But I've already gotten this question before as to why. Why that one. It looks kind of weird. Uh, and that, that really goes back to... Uh, hot rod and standing the test of time okay so and it's also fast okay so I wanted a, I wanted a slightly different uh, steering wheel compared to what everybody else had you know a lot of people run the spoons the mugens um, a lot of the um, standard momo three uh, I call it three legs and I wanted something different I wanted something completely different at one time I even thought about fapping one myself but then I saw this one and I was like, all right, that, that looks pretty cool, so so let's run with that. And um, then I thought about it, I bought it, put it on, it looked pretty cool. A couple years later, it kind of not looked good anymore, and then started to fall in love with it again, because I think it's one of those things where, okay, because the thing is, I wanted a car that can uh, be unique, and this steering wheel is definitely unique. And I kind of wanted a um, steering wheel that were, were like, it's, so imagine if you're driving it, right? You're, you're basically staring at the steering wheel the whole time. So I want a steering wheel that basically gave you the most amount of uh, a view of your instrument cluster. And this one is the one, you know? So if you look at it from that perspective, that's the best one. And also I wanted a uh, kind of a, I don't give a shit kind of a flare for the steering wheel. So yeah, that's what I, that's what I got. It's the Sparco. I think it's a 215 is what it is. And... Um, that's how it looks with a Honda button in it. And the thing is, the other thing is, I think it, it'll, it's pretty good. It flows real well, keeping everything simple. And the reason for the Honda is just because it's a Honda car. We gotta keep it Honda, you know. But the, but at the same time, that red pairs up well with that. Actually, yeah, I don't know if I can show you guys, guys that yet, but it's a works bell. It's a works bell, uh, quick quick release with an NRG fake button because works does not make that button. Otherwise, I would have bought that. And I didn't. I had. I think I found the sparkle button. I didn't like the sparkle button because after a while, you, there's too many logo names going, so it looks kind of stupid. Because you'll have sparkle here and sparkle here. It's kind of stupid. But anyhow, the red red uh, mixes well with the uh, red on the Mugen shifter. That's a genuine Mugen shifter. Okay, bought it straight from King Motorsports, so I know it's legit. Um, and that's where I actually go for all my Mugen parts. If you see a Mugen part that I can buy new, I gotta buy it from King because they're the only distributor in the states that that supposedly carries it. So I don't know. Don't take your chances. Just buy from them. Same with Spoon. If I buy from Spoon, it's always uh, from a well-known retailer or straight to go tuning. So. That's what I got. Uh, let me show you what I'm trying to do right now. Okay, so the wires I've plugged back into my fuse box. I've, I've cut them even closer to the uh, the firewall plug now. But now what I'm trying to do is, uh, well, this is kind of one of the things where, once again, it's going to be uh, concept talk. Is when you cut these wires, you don't want to just you either you strip them all the way back and actually pull them completely out of the harness, or two, you just cut back enough. But if you cut back enough, like what I've done here, you got all these random wires that you might 
might not more likely on the might not side use later so you still need to properly terminate them okay so uh, properly terminating a wire me means you have to cap it off somehow so for me I want to use the easiest way to do that is use liquid tape and just put dabs of liquid tape right on the ends so it seals the wire in so it doesn't corrode over time because you never know you might have to go back for some um, for for some reason go back and tap into one of these lines uh, you don't want a rusty line so from the engineering perspective tap it and uh, cap it off basically so no moisture can get into the wire and then that way you're also guaranteed you're not going to short anything out later too so that's uh, that's what I like to do so um, liquid tape it and then tape it off I'll show you guys the before and after all right let me show you what I got it's kind of a almost final product we got these which I just use the brush applicator from my uh, from my uh, thing from my liquid tape and basically I'm just brushing up like that and this is the final product I guess you can say of it and we're gonna basically just electrical tape it all together and they should be free from uh, free from shorting each other out so yeah actually what I should have done was I should have cut some shorter than others but I don't know, you know. Do that way should be good. Now the other thing is, uh, we have to uh, buy rubber grommets and uh, uh, flex pipe, or flex tubing, and all that stuff to to ensure that our cable, our big cable that we're running for power, right here, does not short out with the frame in any possible way. So uh, just a lot of uh, quality of the build type stuff. So what I'm saying is, I don't think I showed you guys this yet, but these are the two holes. These two holes right there. Those are the two holes that I'm running the uh, the power out to the switch. That's a that's a switch installed on this uh, trim piece. I don't know what it's called. It's called a trim piece. So I'm thinking, you know, power comes into the switch and it goes back out on the bottom. Which is a better angle. There you go. So uh, switch power comes out. I was kind of blurry, but power comes out on top and goes out on the bottom, and uh, that way. These holes need a rubber grommet so that when the wire sits on it, over time, it does not chew through the uh, the wire uh, sleeve itself and short out with the uh, with the card. I was thinking about the design a little bit. The drawing I had before, where I showed you guys, it goes from the battery to the switch back to the fuse, or so we'll switch the fuse and the switch locations. It should go to the fuse slash breaker then the switch then comes back so if there's any issues the breaker should kill it okay so uh, I've actually also changed my idea on the uh, breakers because I thought they were 150 I thought 150 apples is going to be uh, perfect but actually after doing a little bit of research the uh, the box itself has a 100 amp uh, fuse in it so what I'm going to do I'm also, also going to do the 100 fuse let me give you kind of uh, the last the last scene of this video so pretty much put my fuse box back in and I'm just kind of planning out where things are gonna go so uh, let me run you through a couple of little different things oh, yeah. uh, some people might want to know what kind of electrical tape I'm using uh, 3M that's the packaging right there Super 88 highly highly recommended it's extra it's thicker than your normal stuff and it's it is more expensive but in the long run of things you want a really good electrical tape okay so basically what electrical tape was just that turn the light on so, we'll see uh, so you electrical tape that that part and that part right there and then this is bolted back in I think everybody knows how this bolts back in and currently I'm running it through this gaping hole but that's to be patched and that's all I got that's all the wires I got Running out. I'm just, I'm just gonna keep it on the tire for now, but uh, you guys kind of get the idea. All right, that's all I'm doing for today. <sighs> kind of burned out, so yeah. You know, we'll try to do something else on Saturday. And uh, yeah, pretty stoked, man. Pretty stoked. Got a bunch of parts on order. And uh, let's see, what else can we do in the meantime? We can do the other side. Hmm, that's fine. 
All right, so this is something I bought a long, long time ago. Like I said, sometimes things need to be done right. Because the first time I did this car, you know, I'll be the first to say it. I used these cheap ghetto Walmart clips and I basically spliced from my headlight harness to these wires, bypassing the OEM connector, okay? Just bypassed it, it worked, but man, I was a bitch because like a lot of times you'd be driving and next thing you know your lights turn off that's because because of those so about a year after i did that i found these i think i bought these off of password jdm as well these actually plug into the headlight uh freaking awesome i don't know i don't even know if anybody can source these anymore but uh yeah, they're freaking awesome. We're gonna, we're actually gonna splice these directly in, it, in, in, in this now. So no more stupid connectors like that. It's gonna be done properly this time around. Keep that there. Mm. So once again, you know, kind of a attention to details kind of freak if you guys haven't guessed. There's some things that I have to do and certain things where I don't really care. Electrical is one thing where for me, it has to be done right. Because if it's not done right, you're gonna have to, to rewire it again. Learn from a mistake, boys. Because that was the first phase. This is the second phase. If I had just gone and done that, we wouldn't even have this problem. So, learn from my mistakes. Do it once, not twice.